wish to thank Health and Medicine for their recognition and Dr. Claudia Feagan for nominating me for this honor. Being a doctor at Cook County Hospital, the name Quentin Young kind of hangs over everything that we do. In fact, we even have an award named after him that the Physician of the Year gets at the end of our year ceremonies. Seeing that he's such a large figure there um, and that I got the opportunity to actually learn from some of his mentees, it is beyond an honor to be recognized by the organization that he helped found. And I can't express in a short speech or really even in words what this means to me to be associated with this organization and something that Dr. Quint Young was a part of. To be honest, I don't know if the award for me is deserved. I see the work that health and medicine has done and continues to do, as well as the work that my co-awardees have done, and I'm not sure I measure up. But I do know this. I know that health care is a basic human right. It's not a privilege. And in my work as an educator, I will endeavor to do everything that I can to instill to my generation of, of future doctors and all the learners that I ever have contact with to know that health care is not a financial transaction. This is you giving care to those who need it, regardless of their ability to pay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Health and Medicine, for this incredible award. I am absolutely honored to be recognized among these amazing public health leaders and professionals in the field. And I want to say a special thank you to Health and Medicine team for being such amazing collaborators throughout facilitating this award process. For the past 15 years, my career has been focused on addressing the systemic and structural barriers that impede a person's ability to attain their highest level of reproductive and maternal health. So I really have focused on looking at the ways that race and class and gender affect a person's outcomes. And this actually aligns quite well with health and medicine's policy and stance on social justice. It's really imperative that all of our work as health professionals, as healthcare professionals, as public health professionals, really account for the historical context that inequity sits within. I'm really excited to be here alongside other professionals whose work considers the intersectional ways in which a person's identity affects their access to power and resources and ultimately health, because we know that health is driven by access to power and resources. Over the coming years, I'm incredibly excited to continue to advance the reproductive health and health equity of women and other birthing people by engaging with sectors, including the private sector, the nonprofit sector, healthcare sectors, policymakers, to really center equity and incorporate justice, social justice, reproductive justice principles in the work that we do. Again, thank you so much for this incredible award. And um, I look forward to continuing to work in this field for 15, 20, 30 plus more years. Thank you so much to Health and Medicine for this amazing award. I'm truly both inspired and humbled to get this award alongside Sharon Gates and Sister Yaa Simpson, two amazing leaders. I am a longtime believer in and supporter of health and medicine and their commitment to health equity. And that's why this award is amazingly meaningful to me at this point in time. I've spent my life working at the intersection of health, housing, and the environment. And I believe everyone must have the right to healthy, safe, affordable housing. I see all of these issues as being truly connected. And I see this moment in time as a time where we can work together to advance real systems change. I think when we come together across different fields, across different issues, and see how interconnected all of these issues are around uh, racial justice, that's when we can make the systems change that we need to make. I look forward to working with all of you towards a just and equitable future. And thank you again for such an amazing award. Thank you, Health and Medicine Board of Directors and staff for presenting me with a Lifetime Achievement Award, which brings attention to my work in community engagement and social justice which is what I was raised to do by my parents. Through Rush, I work with grade school youth, 
through graduate school. In addition to addressing their needs and connecting them to resources, it is my joy to guide the health equity lens of our students to serve and to focus their innovations on people living below the poverty level. I'm passionate about breaking the cycle of generational poverty in our youth. By doing so, we can improve their lives with a goal of a life well lived. I have had the absolute honor in working with faculty, staff, and students at Rush who speak up when it comes to social justice and their commitment to addressing racism head on. Because of their willingness to serve while working to find balance in their own lives, I am unapologetically supportive of them and their journey. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this wonderful award. Greetings! My name is Yai Simpson, aka Sister Yai, your favorite community epidemiologist. I am so grateful to be receiving this Lifetime Achievement Award from Health and Medicine for more than 30 years of service as a servant leader in the field of public health. I have been a community epidemiologist for the past 23 years with the local health department and serving as a content expert for 20 years with numerous organizations like TAX, the Association of Clinical Trial Services, where we bring science to the people. My experience has gone over and over and over many decades, at least five. And I have been able to build confidence and serenity and being able to speak truth to power and spirit to people. In fact, it was health and medicine, Margie Schreps and Dr. Quinn, that provided me my first opportunity to work as an intern in public health. And now with all my experiences, I know they would be proud of their decision to invest in me. Throughout my career, there has been many, many people that has helped me and supported me. But you know I have to give shout out to my husband, Charles, to my daughter, Ajua, to my family members, my aunties, and of course, mother and father, friends, and all those that's been around me. But I have to specifically thank my mentor, Dr. Gail Frazier, who is the chairman of the National Black Agenda Consortium, because she is the one that nominated me for this award. Thank you. I also want to make sure to say TRS, Northwestern ACTG, Black Star Project, and so many others of which I am a part of and have been a part of my life in receiving this award. I have dared to stand on the shoulders of my ancestors to change the world. I have done it by writing and having written publications, presentations, and a plethora of platforms. And more importantly, they have been dynamic and transformational on the field of public health. The Epi Data Book that we call the State of Health for Blacks, as well as the Tuskegee Journal, that article that I wrote about Black-led service providers getting inequitable funding, as well as the HIV Prevention Trial Network 25 Years of Community Excellence Awards. These are just a few examples of what I have accomplished in this half of century of life. But more to come in the next 50 years, I want to thank Health and Medicine for investing in me. Peace and blessings. Hello, everyone. My name is Kim Jay. I'm the Senior CHW and Training Manager for Crowd at Sinai Urban Health Institute, otherwise known as SUHI. Sinai Urban Health Institute has been in the business of community health work for over 20 years. However, our training arm, CROWD, was just developed officially in the year of 2017. Since then, we have honed the expertise of SUHI's implementation and evaluation components to incorporate it into our training model. So we have gained an excellence in how to train 
and onboard community health workers and support community health worker supervisors and managers. We give them the foundational trainings and core skills that are so valuable to their onboarding and to their careers because it gives them the tools that they need to do the work in front of them. What I am so very grateful for is health and medicine, for giving our team an opportunity to shine in the light of their great work and this opportunity. We are so forever grateful. I would like to say that in onboarding community health workers, we are engaging a population that looks like the communities that they are serving. They give back to the communities that they are serving. And they do that in an equitable way. And during the pandemic, we had the gracious opportunity to onboard over 600 new contact tracers and introduce them into the world of community health. And I tell you, since then, these 600 souls have now joined our army against inequities and disparities and stand side by side with us. I'm so grateful to even uplift their work. They've done a great job. And one thing I want to say uh, loud and clear is that when you include community in the evaluation of doing the work, the outcomes are so much better because they are a part of that decision making. And we are proud to be a part of what Health and Medicine deems outstanding work. I thank you for this opportunity, and my team thanks you. Good evening. Thank you so much for this wonderful honor. At the Knight Ministry, we understand that housing status and health care are inextricably linked. And those without a permanent place to stay are at greater risk for acute and chronic illness, complex medical needs, violence, and recurring ER visits and hospitalizations. The Knight Ministry is honored to meet clients where they are to deliver this critical care and honored to be recognized for the work. Over the last two years in particular, our health outreach teams have found new, innovative ways to serve even more people in more places ensuring that those who are most disconnected from mainstream health services have access to basic medical care. This award is truly an affirmation of the incredible dedication our team has shown and the continued energy and passion they bring to serving Chicago's most vulnerable residents. Specifically, I want to thank the many staff, volunteers, and partners who make this work possible. Thank you. I'm John McKnight and uh, co-founded Health and Medicine with uh, Quentin Young, my wonderful friend who's passed on. And uh, it's, it's so good to be uh, called a visionary. Um, I'm so old, I'm 90, that uh, my eyes are faded. I can't even read a newspaper. So to be called a visionary is very, very heartening, and I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I would uh, wish that it were more true than it is. But uh, Quentin and I, I think, had a vision at the beginning. And uh, I remember at least three parts to that vision. Um, <clears throat> The first was that the federal government had had uh, uh, health planning agencies and uh, when uh, Reagan became president, uh, he did away with them. And so there was a big open space where uh, it was obvious that there was no citizen way to influence collectively uh, health and medicine. So. As the feds faded, <laughs> we came forward. We thought we needed a citizen vehicle to move ahead. The second thing that we had in mind was that we knew that you start with health and then there are several important factors that determine health, uh, how you behave, what associations that you have, what your income are. So health, is a result of several factors, one of which is medicine. And we wanted to put this organization as being health focused with medicine as one element. So that's the second part. 
of the vision and why we have such an unwieldy name. And then uh, finally, who would the members of this group be? And we decided that basically we wanted not the kind of board that listens to what the staff does and raises money. We want a board, want a board of activists. And of course, we didn't even have any staff. People who were doers and thinkers, but who were prepared to go out and uh, work and use their influence collectively to change policy that would improve our health. So those are the three factors that we used in building this organization. We couldn't have imagined that it would, would have become what it has become. It has proliferated, grown well beyond any vision that we have. And it became an organization that is a visionary organization itself. So it's wonderful to be with everybody who's joining us because everybody in health and medicine is a visionary. And I thank you for reminding me, and I would want to remind Quentin that, that we had visions too.